Hi there. Today we're looking at processing megapixel images with deep attention sampling models by Angelos Kataropoulos and François Fleury. Uh, so this is another paper that I saw the talk of at ICML and it's a pretty cool um, idea. It's pretty simple and apparently it works very well. So consider the following image here of a street situation um, and ask yourself if a self-driving car sees this what are the kind of um, things it needs to be aware of so of course one of the things it needs to be aware of is like the road the cars and so on but also what's encircled in red here the street sign and the street sign uh, especially is important because there's a number on it and you want to see what the number is otherwise you won't be able to adjust your speed so if this is now a really large image so if the camera camera is really good and the dimensions of this image are really large then current machine learning methods have a problem because current machine learning methods kind of go up to maybe something like 200 by 200 pixels are the current M ImageNet models, some down sample and so on. So if this is much larger than this, what current machine learning models would do is they would simply down sample, like compress the size, you know, just compress it a bit and so on. And by that, as you see here on the right, if the original patch in the image, you could, you know, you could just cut it out, enlarge it, it would look like this. If you compress the whole image, the same patch would now look like this, blurred. So in the bottom half, you'd be able to recognize the number. In the top half, you wouldn't. So a standard CNN might be able to recognize the road and the car still at the lower resolution, but not the speed sign. What we want is a method that can selectively pay attention to parts of the image that it finds interesting and then look at those parts in full detail while basically deciding to discard other parts completely such as the sky here. So this paper is one that does this and does so in a very efficient manner. So the, the basic premise is very simple. Um, all right, I'm going to show it on this, on the same image. So what you do is first you actually compress the image. So this image would become a smaller image, right? So here, maybe this is 1000 by 2000. You compress it down to maybe 100 by 200. Still the same image, but compressed down. Here's the road. Here's a bunch of trees. I'm very good at drawing trees. And here's this street sign, and here is a car, and here is another car. All right, so, and there is a sky up here. So now what you do is on this smaller version, you classify every location in it. I guess you could classify, you could subsample, but you want to classify every single location on it on how interesting is it and what they do is they take this and just put it through what they call an attention network which is just this it's just a neural network in their case it's a CNN um, that for each location here for each blue location outputs a function a of um, a and let's call it a x y at coordinates x and y of this image x okay i <laughs> this is stupid notation uh that's a of x so the image is x at coordinates i j right so all of these blue things here are i's and j's different i's and j's and then and does this gives you now if you normalize correctly so if you normalize over all the a's and i j a i j if you normalize this gives you a distribution over this image so if we look at it in like 1d this gives you like a, a distribution not a continuous one in this case a 
um, discrete one. How interesting is each patch? And at the end, if you have this distribution, so let's finish here. Um, what you want to do is you want to say, which are the most interesting locations? So this one's pretty high and these are very high. So that might correspond to um, over here, that might correspond to some location. So this location is very high and these locations are very interesting. And only in these locations, you take them out and then only those you process in full resolution. So you might have extracted, let's say four patches. So now you have uh, four of these patches and each of them individually, you run through a second neural network, which is called another CNN, which is called F, the feature network. So the feature network will take a patch and output a vector of features, right? So it will feed those in and output the vector of features. And then what you do is you simply, um, your final output, which they call G, let me uh, colorize this. So G, which is Sorry, G is now the final output. Let's not call it G. Let's call it O output is you sum over all the patches you have extracted down here. So the patch number P over all your patches and you sum these features F of patch P, right? And P might be at location IJ. Let's put IJ here. So IJ in the, the extracted patches. And you weigh each feature by how much attention it got at that location, right? So it looks more complicated than it is. What you do is you simply determine these features by using this neural network only at the position where this neural network says are interesting. Then you get the features from the interesting positions and you basically just um, weigh them by how much attention they, they got in the attention distribution. And that will be your final output of the network. And um, it makes intuitive sense. Like one network decides what is interesting, the other network decides what are we going to do with the interesting things uh, in this in this image? And the cool thing about this is you can basically decide how many of these patches here, how many you want to extract. You can decide at what resolution you want to process this image. Um, and all of this uh, are parameters that you set by how much time you have for computation and how much memory you have for your computation. So that's pretty cool, pretty modular. It can scale up, it can scale down. And the another cool thing is the theoretical guarantees that they give. So basically here, they prove that um, the way they do it, especially um, by extracting the patch, especially if they have an unbiased sorry, especially have, if they have uh, sampling without replacement, is that if they weigh the things correctly, and if they do the things correctly, they show that this is actually an unbiased estimator of the true neural network. Uh, if you were to evaluate on the full image, basically on each patch uh, in full resolution. So only taking the ones where the attention focuses is an unbiased estimator. And not only is it an unbiased estimator, it is in fact the estimator with the smallest variance. And that's what they prove here. So the minimum variance uh, estimator. And this is, uh, this is pretty, pretty interesting. 
pretty cool and works pretty well. They also show how to derive the gradient update when you train with this attention sampling. So now you train your neural, you train your machine learning system not on the whole image, but only on a subset of the image patches. But it still behaves in expectation as if you were to train on the entire image. So pretty neat. So here they show how this compares to uh, full CNN. In this case, we have the full CNN where the picture is simply downsampled and then classified. And this is what's called megapixel MNIST. So in megapixel MNIST, you have a large image and you put three digits in there that are the same, for example, five, five, five from the MNIST data set. You put two random digits, others like two, three, and you put also a bunch of noise, noise patches somewhere. So the task is to recognize uh, which is the dominant uh, digit here. In this case, it would be five, right? Five, five, where was the other one? Five, here. Um, so if you give this to a regular CNN, you see it does about this well. This is the training loss here, training loss, and this is the test loss. And it takes this much time, right? Time per epoch here and this much time to evaluate, sorry. Um, if you now use this attention sampling, and as I said, you can actually modulate how many patches you wanna take. So as you go down, um, you take more patches, we would expect it to take more time. That's exactly what happens. You see, for example, down here in the test error, if you take five patches per image, uh, it takes very little time. But the error, I mean, the error is still better than the, if you use the CNN, simply because you can now pay attention to details much more. As you use more patches, your test error drops, also your training loss, they drop. So using more patches will give, actually give you a better and better and better performing model, but you sacrifice a little bit of time, but still not never as as slow as with the full with the with the CNN. So even though it's a downsampled CNN, right? So that is very interesting and very cool that uh, not only do they beat the the baseline in terms of error, but also a lot in terms of speed. If you look at what the model does as it learns. Here you see for a given image, this is always the same image from the data set. At the beginning, they have actually marked where the relevant, the three relevant digits are in the picture with the red circle. So if you look at how over the training of this model, how this distribution evolves is pretty interesting. Yellow basically means high attention. So at the beginning, you have high attention everywhere in the image, right? Uh, and then as you go on and on and on, you see, for example, here, it pays attention to all the locations where basically where there is something in the image, right? Uh, this could be one of these three digits, but it could also be one of the digits that it's trying to, that is trying to distract the model, like the false digits or the noise patches. And as you go more and more and more, it really learns to only pay attention to the relevant digits and then classify those at full resolution. So this really shows that the this, this kind of attention distribution learns something very meaningful. Um, they do more experiments on two data sets, namely this is a histopathology data set right here, where the goal is, I think, to recognize this epithelial cells, this type of cell. Um, and you can see the this here is the baseline, and um, this here is the new method. And the baseline, basically, what it does is it does similar thing, namely it processes the image in patches, but it processes every single patch um, 
maybe in succession, but it still processes every single patch, whereas the attention sampling only processes the patches that the attention sampling distribution uh, suggests. And this other data set here is a street sign data set that you saw at the beginning right here. Um, and the, the, again, I think this is the baseline and this is the attention sampling. So both learn to pay attention to the street signs, but again, the attention sampling much more efficient. So here you see the baseline performance. The attention sampling performance is similar in terms of test error, but if you look at how much time the baseline uses per sample and how much memory, and then compare this to the attention sampling, you see that they save uh, at least an order of magnitude in time and memory. And the same thing goes for the street sign data set. You see test error here, and then test error is similar for the attention sampling, but again, time, memory, much, much lower. Um, so the attention sampling is faster and is more memory efficient than the baseline. And that makes it, makes it easy to process these megapixel images even on, here they say, process megapixel images in a single CPU or GPU. And that really, I like this because it kind of brings the research back to, let's say, regular people or maybe universities that don't have as much money as large companies. And um, so all in all, very cool paper, very neat experiments. They have a lot in the appendix. Uh, check it out where they show their attention distribution in these images. Uh, their theoretical analysis is pretty easy to follow if you want to check that out. And with that, thanks for listening and bye-bye.